now go to Matthew Brodsky, a senior fellow at the Security Studies Group, and he joins us live from Washington tonight. Matthew, good to have you with us. And uh, Matthew, as we just discussed with Sarah, a preliminary agreement reached between the U.S., Russia, and Jordan that establishes buffer zones in southwest Syria, and that puts Iranian-backed forces within just a few miles of Israel. Russia's Foreign Minister Lavrov saying that Iran's presence in Syria is legitimate. What do you make of all of this? Well, I think it's an absolutely horrible plan. It's, I can't understand why uh, the Trump administration would be uh, okay with this, uh, despite whatever, you know, the National Security Council people who are meeting in Israel are saying. Um, the fact is, Iran really is entrenched in Syria, and it's going to be for a long period of time. It's a fantasy to believe that uh, they and Russia are going to somehow split. They're strategically connected and have many of these same goals. And I don't think the United States, whether it was the Obama administration or the Trump administration, has really figured out that if you want to split Iran from Russia, which is the key here, you have to weaken Iran so that it is less valuable to Russia. That's the only way to accomplish that. So this is the reality in Syria. From Israel's perspective, it's a matter of how far can they keep the IRGC? How far can they keep Hezbollah away from the border and setting up a brand new front? That is the main issue that Israel is facing, and they're clearly making sure that the world has their attention uh, when it comes to that. Well, to your point, uh, Israel uh, for a while now has been voicing these concerns uh, with Moscow, Washington, and Amman, but it appears that Israel's concerns weren't taken into account and by the U.S., by the Trump administration, as you just said. Is that surprising? I think it's surprising. You have a speech last month, last uh, month from the president, and he is saying that he is going to have a policy uh, that deals, first of all, with Iran's nuclear program, uh, to renegotiate it, not to walk away yet, and then to push back on Iran in the region. This is precisely where you'd want to start by pushing back on Iran, and uh, he's not doing that. Now, of course, if the United States walked away from the nuclear agreement, that means military action is far more likely. So why would one want to have military action far more likely, whether it's the United States or Israel, and then at the same time have given and ceded more and more territory to uh, Iran? And this at the same time, no one's been able to really explain what the U.S. has gotten back from Russia when it comes to the United States saying, yeah, okay, Sure, you can have your, you, you can set up with so Iran Matthew, over there and that ceasefire is fine. So Matthew, how does but, one force Iran out of Syria? I mean, what is the way to do it? Well, first of all, you would need the United States to stand up against Russia. Um, that's so number one. So it would one. be a war two, with like the U.S., I, Russia and Iran? I mean, is that the situation that could unfold here in order no, to I'm really not get saying Iran the United out of there? States goes. I'm not saying the United States go to war with Russia, but what I'm saying is that the U.S. has uh, leverage in its hand when it comes to sanctions. There's, for some reason, uh, President Trump has just been unwilling to really pressure Putin, and I think that needs to change. From Israel's perspective, I think they need to pretty much keep making clear that there are red lines uh, that they're not going to allow to be passed. You know, it, it really is a strategic choice for Israel and then a strategic choice for Iran, whether there's going to actually be a conflict. And assuming, the guardians are Russia and the, and the U.S. Well, assuming Russia concedes and agrees that Iran and Iranian-backed forces shouldn't be in Syria, would Iran listen to the Russians? I mean, I don't... I don't see how or why, but even if they do, what they could, what's most likely is that they would end up doing some part of an agreement. You see, Hezbollah is able to use Shias and people in villages and to basically create its own its own group of followers. I mean, this is the hostile Shabi type of uh, formula. They use that as a cookie cutter. So Hezbollah, say for instance, could pull out of parts of uh, southwest Syria, but they'd still leave behind all these people who are their activists and. You know, along with their infrastructure, so it doesn't. It wouldn't really change the strategic uh, picture from Israel's perspective, but of course, it would allow Russia to say, "Look, I've done X, Y, and Z." You know, <laughs> what right. can you ask of me? I mean, they did the same when it comes to the chemical weapons program from 2013 in Syria. You well, know? we saw we they saw how, how that worked out. Yeah, we saw how that worked out. Uh, clearly, those chemical weapons weren't cleared out entirely. 